We believe that everybody has worth. And what we try and do is develop people's life skills. A lot of our clients have adverse histories. And what we try and do is help them out of that, get them to address their issues, um, whether it be drugs, mental health. And at the same time, give them accommodation. So you have to work, really, when they're here. Working on their issues. Gone are the days when people just sit around doing nothing. They have to be working with us. I'm a project manager of the Bellevue Road Life Skills Service. We've got a lot of services to St James, not just Bellevue Road Life Skills. It's not just commendation, you have to work with us um, to try and get out the life spiral that you've got yourself into or all the circumstances they've got, they've found themselves in. Everybody's allocated a key worker. So all the clients here, all our clients have a key worker. And the key worker will arrange to meet them. It could be once a week, it could be once a fortnight, it could be once every three weeks, depends what the needs are. And they will sit and have a session with them, a support plan session, and there's paperwork to be filled in. So they um, will talk about what their goals are, what they want to get out of life, what they want to do. The key work, and they will take, and there'll be steps written down for them, how they achieve that. And the key worker will expect and them to take those steps. It has to be realistic, um, achievable, and all the rest of it. And the key worker will follow that up every time they meet that client and help them achieve what, they, what it is they feel they need to achieve. And I've got moved into Fire Bellevue Road. Um, I had no goal, no direction. Um, my life was in pieces, in some tatters. I didn't know what to do. I was brought up in foster care um, since I was six months old. I was brought up in a white, white, white area by white, white foster parents. Um, love them to pieces. I had a few problems I ended up losing my flat, council flat, and um, I was just walking through Shirley, like south like in this town and stuff. And I was a little bit tipsy and stuff, but I see the police and stuff, and I was just, I was like walking the streets, and I was just, I got a little bit cheek out, actually a little bit was drunk and a little what I was, and the police come up and asked me like, where I was going, asked who I was and where I was going, and I just said to them, I also started crying and said I don't know where to go. Hi, I'm Cheryl Heslop and I'm a support worker. And I started off as a relief worker. And then I moved, within six weeks, I moved to my own little house, a residence of five, and I run the house on my own. And I then went to Langard. <laughs> I've been around, actually. So I've been to Foster Road, which is a young person's project. Um, I've been mental health. Albert Road South, which is an up hostel. So I've sort of been around the society. I came here four years ago. In the early 2000s, and I was living with some so-called friends at the time in, in um, East Horsley, just outside of Leatherhead, in Surrey. And um, my girl I was seeing at the time, she was getting ready to have um, my like, first child. And I was doing like heroin and, and there was needles everywhere and I wanted to move out. I didn't want to bring my kid up around that. One day I was just walking home from work and then the car drove past and I was shouting at the car and everything. And something told me in my head, I was like, I don't mind. Do you know what I mean? And I was in the middle of nowhere walking back to where I was staying in Leverhead, or in Bookham, Leverhead, just outside of Leverhead. And then the car pulled up and then the bloke that I used to go around with when I lived in the house, He's like, hey, where are you going, mate? Do you need to a lift? And I was like, a bit, oh, I don't know. He goes, come on, I'll give you this. I got in the car and that. And he drove up, he goes, there's someone that wants to see you. And I knew straight away what it's all about. And pulled my tooth out with a pair of pliers, burnt me with a little bunch and burn on the hand, cigarettes. And it's trying to make me like, get money and stuff. And I was just like, do you know what? I, like, I can't go for this in what? Like, F you, do you know what I mean? So I threw the phone at him, and I ran out, out the bedroom, slammed the door, ran down a couple of flights of stairs, and out, out, out the front door, and the car park, I was like, I was waiting for the police to be out there, and there was just no one. I thought I, I, thought I was gonna change the world, and there was never, ever gonna be another homelessness person, ever, on the street. <laughs> it's totally different to what I thought it would be, to be honest because you can't help everyone. And I just thought I could just help everybody and everyone would be happy, and it's not like that. I think if they've been here for a while, 
I think the long, longest one I had, he was here a year and a half. And you sort of get to know their personalities and sort of what they're like. So, yeah, I suppose you sort of, you get used to them more than anything, yeah. And you sort of get used to their personalities and the person they are and you can see through what they're going through, if you know what I mean. You see, actually see them as a person, which is quite nice. I was in Dun I was in Dunal for, for a good uh, 15 to 18 months because when I lost my litter then, it's just like she's only three months old. I mean, it, like, it crip that crippled me. And then I was like, went back to the hostel where I lived in Patrick House. And one of my friends had an argument with someone and I kicked off there and I got arrested and all that. it was just a bit of a nightmare. And then I was just like, I didn't give up, I didn't give up, oh, what's the word? I couldn't give a bother about my life really, about swearing. I just couldn't, didn't care. And like, I was just like, I was just like, I hate the world, the world hates me. Do you know what I mean? There's this stuff, and then my ex girlfriend, I mean, it's like she uh, killed herself on Mother's Day, and she couldn't cope, and that it just ruined me. And I was like, selfish cow, leaving me with all the stuff, like with all the, the depression and stuff. And I was on medication, and I thought the medication wasn't helping me so much because I was waking up, I was feeling tired all the time, and, and I was just, I was like, I don't want that. Do you know what I mean? I was like, I'm a buzzy sort of person, do you know what I mean? And it didn't really help me, so I, I got myself off the of depressants and nothing. I started building myself up from there, really. I moved into a hostel um, probably about 20 months ago, and I was in a room upstairs. Uh, it's quite a small room, and I, I don't know if you've filmed, like, you filmed the ones upstairs. I was in there for about four months, and then um, I got off, moved into a bigger room, and probably read about like, the, size, or the size of this little bit here. And I was in there for about a month and I got this place really. Aww. So I was sort of getting my head together and everything and stopped being an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and got myself sorted out and stuff and then. But uh, when I moved out, because like, the staff like, told me not to have bright colours in here. And I was like, I've got to have it, you know, it was just something funky. So like, I just thought like, after I moved out, it's like, because the decorator comes in and uh, like, sorts the place out really, cleans it up and decorates. But, um, I thought I'd come in and just take all this stuff off, really. Because like, they've helped me a hell of a lot out in here, do you know what I mean? So, I just want to say, like, thank you, really, do you know what I mean? Because, like, it cost, if they're out to do it, it cost me a hell of a lot of money, really. I think it's when they get their own place and they furnish their own place and they get a job. And you might see them in the street, like, a year later and they will say hello. And it's, that's quite nice. And you see them and you go, oh, well, you're right. And they go, yeah, I've got my own place, got a job. I've moved on, blah, 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 and that's quite nice. I did have one guy, actually, um, he was an alcoholic, and he actually went and got married, went on holiday and everything else, so he's living the perfect life, really, which is quite nice. They're there for them, do you know what I mean? And they will help you 100%, and I'm, and I'm proud of them, and I give them so much love for making me... <laughs> helping me get along with my life, do you know what I mean? And it's just, if it wasn't for them, I'd be in pieces. <laughs>